My guest is Dr. Eric, who is the director of the Isaiah 58 mission here in Guatemala City. And in the background, you can hear a worship program that's going on right now for the people who come to this center. Dr. Eric, can you please describe how this center started, why, and, and what happens here? We started about two and a half years ago. We began by offering bread, warm beverages, cereal, and some juice to people who live off the streets. These are people who found refuge under covered areas or nearby hospitals. But then, we moved on to a park where we met every Sunday, and many people came to us. We served them lunch and spoke to them about God. We soon realized that winter was approaching, and we decided that we had to find a house to use as a base of operations. So we began to pray, to pray for this project, because renting a house means we would have to raise money. It was then we found this house, which is affordable enough when you consider rental costs here in Guatemala. So we began to assist people here, not only on Sundays, but on Sabbath and during the week as well. And this is how we operate now. Wonderful. Now, can you please describe for our viewers what happens here? We open on Mondays and Wednesdays for people to come and wash their clothes. There's also rooms for them to shower, and then we invite them to listen to the Word of God. After a short Bible study and some singing, we offer them supper. We always prepare a healthy meal, and on Sabbath, this house is used as a church. We study the Sabbath school lesson, we sing, and we pray, and a special sermon is presented because more people are attending on Sabbath than any of the days during the week. This is basically what we do here. We offer these services because the people asked us for the possibility to take a shower, to wash their clothes, and for a place to change their clothes. We also give them clothes and shoes that we get as donations. And we also supply items for their hygiene, as toothbrushes or bath soap. And you know, they're very happy and grateful for this program. That's beautiful. Now, Doctor, why are you personally involved in this ministry? Well, for now, I'm the president of the program. We meet every week on Tuesday evening and we talk about all the facets of the Isaiah 58 program. We often ask people for assistance. For example, Lions International Club operates here in Guatemala, and they have given us many of the meals and personal hygiene items that we offer to the people who come here. Our families also get involved. We're five families working on this project. The Zone 15 Adventist Church took notice of how well the program is working and how much it helps the people. So they decided to help us to pay for rent. The Zone 15 Adventist Church also pays for a person to run the program by being here on a daily basis. The Isaiah 58 project was inspired by a person, a missionary who came from Colombia. He came to preach a sermon and then told us that they have an Isaiah 58 project in his country. As we listened, we thought we could do the same here in Guatemala. And the truth is that the people who live in the streets don't receive any help. We have seen some churches that distribute food on the street. That is exactly what we did at first. But we wanted to give them more more than just a piece of bread and juice. We wanted to give them the Word of God, that they might know God, that they may experience the love of God. That's why this group of families joined together to start this project. Our motivation is to help people. That's what we want to do. Well, thank you for what you and your team are doing. 
Doctor, can you tell me an experience of somebody who has been ministered to through this center? We have four people in critical conditions who overcame the problem of living on the streets, a problem that is often surrounded by a number of vices. One of them, the first person, was a long-time alcoholic. He drank a lot of liquor. His eyes were yellow, his liver was swollen, and his spleen was so large. This person was about to die. We decided to help him by providing him medicine, food, and by helping him to understand that he needed to make a serious change in his life if he intends to live. You know, that person changed. That happened two years ago. This person lives here now and helps us by working in the house. Another success story is about a person who came here just to listen to the messages. He now lives abroad, outside of Guatemala. About a month ago, he told us that he's already rehabilitated. He now wears a tie, a jacket, and sells Adventist books as a co-porter. He is now a completely changed person. Those are two of the people who are in the worst conditions, people who have struggled to make a change. But there are others. Some others have got a job and they have managed to improve their lives as well. Wonderful. Muchas gracias, Dr. Eric. Thank you for sharing with us. Our viewers at home, Isaiah 58 Ministries, Mission. Uh, if you haven't read that chapter recently, I, I recommend that you read it again. It's very important about putting Christ's method of ministry. Thank you.